Good morning, good evening, aloha, wherever you are. I'm going to try to pile on as many ways to say hello and good morning as possible. So if you have some that you want to share with me, I'll try to say all of them. I was thinking about it in the car this morning. I was like, how many do I know? Yeah. Willkommen. Bonjour. This is how I know you have a long ride. It is. That's yeah. what I got to do. That's what I do. Let my mind wander so that <laughs> by the time I get here, I've, I'm focused. Yes. So, uh, hey, howdy. There's a couple more. Whoa. <laughs> uh, my name's Brian Hare. I'm here with Free Salon Education Live. Got your color class on Wednesday, hump day morning. I'm um, here with, of course, Matt Beck. Hello, everyone. Keeping me uh, corralled and caged, the wild animal I am. <laughs> this should be, uh, you know what I was thinking about before we started? This should be our last time having to do this masked because it's just us in here. True. And then next time we'll both be all We're vaccinated, vaccinated and healthy. Yeah. Love that. So this wait, is the when last do you get your second one? Sunday. Okay. But then you have to wait two weeks. Yeah, but I mean we're not like open mouth kissing. We're just like <laughs> in each other's presence and we're still like seven feet away, not facing each other. Got it. We'll make yeah. it work. Yes. Uh exactly. all right. So before we dive in, Matt, do you want to run through your rules and everything that you you do? Yep. So guys, welcome to the show. Um if you guys can do us a favor, and if you have a question, type Q, put in your question, so a Q before the question. Um, if you've watched this show before, you guys know we need your help uh, throughout the, the class. If somebody's new to the show and they're asking questions, just help answer in the chat, uh, you know, what our website is, our shop, um, what Brian said, what he's doing, because they're going to jump in late. You guys know the drill. So uh, type Q if you have a question. I'll get it up there for Brian. And then um, if you have, uh, if you can help out in the chat, that's that's all we ask. And please hit the share button. Let's get this room as big as possible. Uh, it's growing right now. Let's keep it going. Yeah, let's get out there. Sweet. All right. Uh, so today I decided to continue with, it's not really a series, but continue with the uh, the vibe of, Highlighting for haircuts, highlighting for specific looks, specific haircuts, specific styles, and doing what you want to do to get there. So Matt did this really cool short haircut last week. Was yes. it? Yes. Yeah? I think so, yeah. And said like, hey, why don't you highlight this? So I said, okay. So I took it home, poured a glass of wine, put on Disney Plus, and just started playing with the haircut, seeing where... I felt like we could really put some energy to make this thing just come to life. It was a cool haircut, and you can use color very simply to really elevate a haircut. In looking at it, I noticed he had lots of like cool PC, jaggedy pieces here and there, and we've got this long bang going in the, like the, the top of the hair, and it's disconnected from here. So I thought, let's do some really cool balayage. Let's just showcase where the eye should travel with this hair to show all that texture that he's got in there because an overall color would be pretty, but she was one color at the start and you, you lose some of the texture, especially if you're not styling it like this every single day. Like your guest might necessarily not be whipping out a flat iron and wax and pulling all this every day. So color will help to show the texture that you've put into the haircut even when the hair isn't styled all the way out like this. Sweet. So, does that sound good? Sounded good. Is there anything about the haircut you want to hit on? No. Like, technically? Just no. tell him to go watch the class? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a class from last week. I think it was our Tuesday uh, class last week, so if you guys want to go back and watch the cut. Um, but, yeah, it's just like uh, it's a fringier pixie cut. So um, a couple things that I liked. This one's a little bit different than the pre-done that you're doing. Um I had to change it up a little bit. Otherwise, it's a waste of a cut, um, kind of. But uh, this one's fringier a little bit because I overdirected everything up to the parietal and cut it there. So it pushed that weight down. So, you know, go back and watch And this one it. I fun. noticed there's a little more, like, it's fringier everywhere. That's what I kind of meant. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Fringy everywhere. Not just. Yeah. Yes. But that works because, again, I'm not trying to teach you a this is exactly how you do this 100% of the time. I'm here to try to teach you what to do 
in a million different scenarios so that when someone sits down and you know what to do with the flow of their haircut, that's, that's my goal. That's what I'm trying to teach you. Confidence. Confidence. All right. We'll come back to this because I'm sure you're going to want to see it because that yellow is awesome. Matt and I had a whole conversation about yellow being my favorite fantasy color, and it's like up there on his list as well. Yeah. So everyone gets to enjoy that. Switch her out. Now we got noodles. Far less exciting. See, look at that difference. Similar haircut, not quite the same. Wait, yeah. Wrong way. That one's a little poofier, heavier. But I just, I mean, I'm saying, like, just look at the difference in creating some dimension with color, how much it just elevates that haircut. Cool, 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 cool. All righty. So first things first, it was funny when I was, I was showing Matt, like, wow, well, with a mannequin, one of the really easy ways to figure out what you need to highlight is you just turn it upside down and everything that hangs off of the head, let me get from behind it, everything that hangs off of the head needs to be highlighted because the stuff that's sitting real close to the head in real life wouldn't be long enough to need to be lightened or it wouldn't have gotten lightened by the sun, but all this stuff is long enough. That would get lightened by the sun, so this is what you're going to highlight. So this is a great uh, point, Brian, and I love when you said it earlier when you were telling me about it. But I'm also thinking like er, people in the chat are going to be like, well, I can't turn my client upside down. So how yes, do I figure can. this out? <laughs> Where there's yeah. a will, there's a way. Flip yes. them over. Yeah. Put a pull-up bar in the salon. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that was it? That's my question. Wait. How, how do you do this with a client? Oh. Oh. Flip them over. <laughs> no. Um, feeling through the haircut. I mean, you can get the same effect by lifting the hair up yourself. Yes. Like, looking at it. If you can grab it, what do they say? I used to say about whenever someone complained about me getting another piercing. And they're like, is there anything left to pierce? I'm like, if you can pinch it, you can pierce it. And my thought was the same thing as this. If you can pinch it and grab it, you can highlight it. But, yes. you know, like with the shorter stuff, you're not really getting a good grab, so you're not really going to highlight it. So it's just a really random rule of thumb from the weirdness that is my brain. I like it. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, so we're going to be working with Paul Mitchell Skylights today because that's what I got and that's what I love, so that's what you're going to get. Um, 40 volume because we've got a nice dark canvas here, and I want to actually leave this with a really good color so that Matt can use it again for something else, or I can. Who knows? Yeah. We're all a team here. Yep. All right, so let's get mixing. Did I answer your question? Okay. Let's start with just a, a scoop. Skylights, clay base, perfect for balayage, perfect for this scenario. I don't have a need necessarily for the bali wrap today. Because when I did it the other day, I didn't use it, and I was fine. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see I, this is some of the random stuff that I like to put in my stories. Because I was working on this at home. And that's a good call. I like your thought process there. What? She said, highlight first, then go into that with the tri razor to break up that heavy front section. Hot. <laughs> Hot. I agree. I love that tri razor. And it's such a great conversation piece. I was using it yesterday and like I blew this dude's mind. I was like, yeah, check this out. I'm doing this and I'm explaining like the little bits and why you use a razor and what it does. And it's very good. Gave me something to talk about with the dude. Sweet. Stacey's All right. He's asking if you can use tri onyx higher and. Higher developer with skylights. 50 wow. Points. I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to weigh in on that just because I haven't used it. Yeah. Sounds cool. I'm interested. If they want to send it to me, I'll try it. All right. 50 volume. That's a lot of volumes. That's so much volume. All right. We want to move yeah, yeah. up. Come on in. So the way that I like to approach these types of haircuts, 
I want to start with the longest hair in the haircut because that's what would be the lightest if you were trying to translate this to a, oh, the sun did it kind of thing. So looking at the haircut, playing with it a little bit. Don't, again, you need to figure out where these highlights are going to go no matter what the haircut is. So for this haircut, I come through, I'm feeling it. All right, this is, this fringiness is where we've got the biggest uh, canvas to work on. So that's where we're going to start, right up here, and then work our way back. So a couple people are asking, what is holding your brushes upright? Um, I have an anti-gravity table from (laughs) That we're live on Minerva Beauty's Facebook as well, and this is a Minerva Beauty. My table? Yeah. Well, come on, Minerva. No, I do the upright, and it's shocking, but it really does help. There's four holes that perfectly fit. Four? I don't know, four that I found that perfectly fit the brushes because sometimes I'll have three different balayage brushes and then I've got the loader brush for the lightener itself. And then when I got to go get more or make more, I just stick them like that so that I don't, I'm I'm sure I've mentioned before, I get crazy when things start to get dirty and lighteners going everywhere. So this just helps keep everything neat, keeps everything clean keeps the brushes from getting gross and then getting product everywhere I don't want it. It's a really great table. I just go and get it from the salon to come do these classes because I use it all day. Yeah. And I've, <laughs> cause I, I've discovered early on in these classes that by trying to look cool and just using a table, I look less cool because I drop shit. I, yeah, I need this table. It's how I function now. All right, bangs. I want to get a good angle so you can see. Are we just doing this one, like no overhead? All right. Can you, you want the overhead? Well, I just, just want to make sure that you can this see. It's wild on my forehead. I look like I have sun tan. Beautiful. Yeah, that's mine. <laughs> oh. I'll move. I'm just starting. Okay. All right. So you're not going to, you're going to want to work away from their face. You're not going to want to brush bleach into their eyes. I have discovered they don't love that. So little bit of my knowledge for you. Starting with this longer stuff. I like, I'm going to use V's in my balayage today just because I like that almost like mini ombre look for shortcuts like this. So I'm just going to load it up on my paddle, keeping my section not too, too thick because I want to make sure that I get saturated through the section. I know in some some instances you don't love that, but in this instance I do want it to actually soak through. So keep your section on the skinnier side, but not so skinny that it collapses. So, all right, so here's my start. Now I've determined where my lightener is going to be. Now I'm going to determine how much I put in there. Remember, saturation is key to how much lift you're going to get. This isn't going to be that much lift, and this is a pretty dark base that we're working on. So I'm going to keep loading up that highlight with more lightener because the more lightener you use, the more it's going to create that nice little environment that is going to allow for a bright highlight. I also am a big fan of when I do the V like this, Whichever side of my highlight V is closer to the face, I like it to be a little stronger. It just adds a little extra taste of dimension for you. So again, this side, super duper strong. I brush back and forth to expose anything underneath that hasn't been lightened yet. So I snag those little guys. Put my V back together. Get a good saturation on those ends. 
And then just a little bit more on the back side of the highlight. If you are working on somebody and you're worried about getting bleach on their face, in their eye, whatever, please feel free to use something underneath this section. I am not concerned with her health, so I am not. She can get bleach right in her eye for all I care. Oh, thanks, Tammy. I'm glad Matt saw that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now you're just working up. We've determined the longest needs to be the lightest. So in keeping with the shape of this haircut, you're going to just keep working up the head, working with your next longest sections. In here is where the haircut starts to transition from the long fringe into you know the shorter parts of the pixie. So I'm going to just be conscious of that because while I do want nice strong highlights in the bang, it's not the only place that I want highlighted. I want movement throughout this haircut because otherwise we're looking at a John and Kate situation and uh, I don't uh, support that hate crime. So instead of a V, because of this transition into the back, I'm just doing a one-off, throw another one behind it, because that's my business. Sorry, I listened to Tabitha Brown's sleep story last night. Do you know who Tabitha Brown is, Matt? Yeah, Christina listens to Tabitha Brown all the time. I'm obsessed with her. Okay. And I do sleep stories at night, and she just came out with one. I went to sleep last night with the biggest smile on my face because I love listening to that woman speak. Yeah, it's pretty funny. I mean, I, I don't, I just hear it from across the room. Christina's right. like, Listening to it, it's pretty funny stuff. She's fantastic. Yeah. If you want to have like a smile for your day yeah. or your night. It was Tabitha nice. Brown. So if she watches this or if someone that you know watches this, tell her I said, hey, thanks for just being you. Erica says love her. Right. Yesterday I had a client say, I just want to be friends with her. And I was like, I do too, but I don't know that I'm her cup of tea. <laughs> I would be friends with her, and I feel like she would probably just be like, hey, thanks, Brian. Have a good day. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I get it. I don't want to sully the good Tabitha Brown. All right, pay attention. These are the spots where I get real excited because these are kind of like money pieces for a short haircut because it's like... Let me show the front view. See if I can, yeah. yeah, there you go. Because we're starting to get that right in the front there. Let me turn. So this is going to be exciting. So I'd want to hit this hard. All right. So I'm going to. I like to pull it the direction it's going to sit and highlight it. Because if I, so that's actually good. And I don't think I've ever spoken on that. Especially with haircuts like this. This haircut is made for this piece of hair to go this direction. So I like to hold it in that direction when I apply my highlight. Because that's where the lightness is going to be, and that's how you're going to see the highlight. If I come over here and overdirect it the opposite way, then all of my highlight is going to be underneath when the hair falls back into the position that it's going to be worn. So if you just go ahead and pull it this direction, then your highlight is going to be what is seen. That's a really good point. You're welcome. We, somebody said, oh, I think it's Adele. Is it Tabitha, the hairstylist? Oh, like Tabitha takes over? No, different no. Tabitha. O opposite. Yeah. In many ways. Soothing. Soothing. Tabitha Brown is soothing. Yes. Tabitha Coffee is not as soothing. I would enjoy a sleep story by her, but it would have to be really. Not exactly something she's known for. Did I ever tell you I sat next to her on the plane? No. How did that never come up? I don't know. But I was headed to a hair show, and we literally were right next to each other. Did you talk? Yeah. I'm sure she's nice when she's not on oh, camera. Oh, no, she's, she is nice. She, she's definitely nice. But, she, yeah. but yeah, it was funny because we were just like literally That's right fun because I knew you'd interviewed her. I didn't know you got to like spill wine on her on an airplane. Yeah. That's yeah. a fun inside joke, because when you sit next to me on an airplane, 
you're in the splash zone. Yep. We were flying across country, and 45 minutes into our six-and-a-half-hour flight, I fell asleep and spilled an entire glass of red wine on a girl who stupidly <laughs> wore all white to sit next to me on the airplane. Guys, this really happened. It really did. And me and Christina were, like, diagonal. Yeah, and they were, right? like, across the aisle sitting there, yeah, and, like, and we they just like see all this old. commotion going on, and I was like, <laughs> help me. Give me all your napkins. Do you have wet wipes? I'm trying to clean up. And she was not having my apology. <laughs> And then I got to sit next to her for five more hours. That was yep. not the greatest day of my life. <laughs> was that the, the same time that we uh, got to Vegas and didn't have a room? Possibly. Makes sense. I feel like it was a, it was a trip. It was a trip. Literally. All right. So you seeing what we're going here? What would you do with your client if you didn't want to have the hair on her face like that? Um, I might, two things. I would either put a piece of like Bali wrap under there and be like, Hey, sorry about it. Okay. Like you have to look through that. Or I would over direct even more. The good yeah. part about doing a mannequin is I don't have to worry about it in the face. So this is going to be super blonde when you look at it straight on in a scenario, like <clears throat> real life scenario. This is a real person. She's probably not wearing her hair straight down like this. So it is okay to over direct it more because that's where it would be. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Look at all these people saying they would be mad at me. Yeah, I know. So was she. It was an accident. <laughs> I didn't throw wine on her because I thought she was on fire. I fell asleep and knocked my glass over and I apologized profusely. Even the flight attendant was a bitch about it. He's like, maybe we should switch to white wine now. And I'm like, all right, all right, I get it. I noticed when I was cleaning the seats with the wet wipes that Christina had in her bag, my red wine was the least of her problems. Why is she wearing all white on a flight? Those seats were filthy. Wait. Christina, even pre-COVID, always had wet wipes on the plane. Actually, she always yeah. has wet wipes in general, but... Yeah. Yeah. And pre-COVID, airplanes were filthy. Yeah. So I just made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I still drink red wine on planes, though. I just don't fall asleep. All right. So now we're still moving up the head. We're moving up the round of the head. Not forgetting that this is where we're going to see more sun. Or, you know, technically. Not really. But this is what would be seeing the sun. So this is what should be getting a little lighter. So I'm coming in. Coming in hot. Hot and hard. You're welcome. Tammy says vodka doesn't stain. It's true. True. Just stains your memories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then I wouldn't have stories to tell like these. True. What, oh, I spilled a gin and tonic. Like, who cares? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling this. What I love about these types of situations, like balayage catered to a haircut, is that it feels like the most artistic you can possibly be because you look at this and you see what's been highlighted, what hasn't, where else do you want highlights to happen? This is looking super like in the void. So we need to break all that up. So we got these gorgeous highlights under here. She's getting a little bit on her mustache. You're welcome. So I want to keep this look rocking all the way through. We got a super shadow in there, so let's hit real hard. The highlight towards the face is gonna be heavier. Get a nice thick saturation to where you cannot see those little individual hairs through the highlight anymore. And that's how you know you're gonna get a nice bright, bright highlight. If you hearken back to our Balayage 101, I talk about whichever, whichever Balayage you're using, that's something that you want to achieve. Like, you see how in there you can't really see those hairs anymore? That means it's going to be within the little environment that we're creating. So it's not going to dry out when the product inevitably dries out the outside of it in a couple minutes. Cool, 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 cool. Again, taking a look at this. This piece, it needs a little love. doesn't need to go crazy, but it could use a little love. Not everything needs to be the same intensity. 
That's what I also like about balayage is the ability to control that. I'm going to let some of the hairs peek through on this because I don't necessarily want every single highlight to be super, super bright because then you might as well just do an all over color. That's not what I'm going for. Kel says next time throw a color cape on your passenger. <laughs> I'm just going to travel with like the robe. Well, he is just tuning in. She says, are you bleaching her mustache too? Laugh out loud. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're full service here. We make people look good. If you're rocking a mustache, then I'm going to, I'm going to make it match. That's not really carpet and drapes. It's like drapes and throw pillows. The mustache is throw pillows. All right, so now you're approaching the hair that's going to sit atop all of your pixie. Turn it off. What? Yeah, look how cute that looks. So I just officially um, made it so I can put you in jail. What? Oh, <laughs> all right. There it is. There we go. Oh, there's, there's my new profile pic. That's awesome. My mom will enjoy that tonight when so, she's watching this. If I need to use it, I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so as that is so ridiculous. That's not even nice looking. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, hey, that was like happened in the last three seconds. I'm. Hey, you know what? This is an ever-evolving show, and I'm into it. <laughs> Just joined. Show up on Wednesdays. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Just joined what percent? Uh, 40 volume. Yeah. And then Leanne Burke with that? The Will a touch-up be difficult? No. Touch-ups with balayage are quite easy um, because... You don't have to get exactly where you highlighted before. I think every time you put a balayage on somebody, it adds another layer of dimension and just starts to look nicer. Like I tell every one of my guests that are, it's their first balayage, I'm like, this is going to look really good, but it's going to look better when you come back and even better when you come back after that because that keeps them excited. That, you know, you want to create excitement around what you're doing. This is exciting stuff. It's really cool. You put a lot of knowledge, a lot of thought, a lot of care into it. So to let them know that you're putting thought into what their hair is going to be three visits from now, that could be a year for some people. Like, that's cool. That shows that you care about them. I think I, the other thing, too, when I talk about, like, the question comes up all the time about redoing what you did. Mm -hmm. But... When she comes back, so let's say she came in today and she was this brown everywhere, mm -hmm. one dimensional. So we chose this technique. When she comes back and we're not going to do the same technique, we're going to assess what she looks like and what she wants. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to do a technique that caters to that. Exactly. So people, people need to, to not worry so much about replicating what you did. Um, if they loved what you did last time, then it's going to be a subtle, um, addition to just kind of keep that look going. You're not going to do the same thing. Right. The best hairdressers, it's like the whole, you know, the, the con, the comparison of like an oak tree and a willow tree, the best hairdressers are willing to like flow with it and not, you can't do the same thing on every person or even the same thing on that person. Every time you got to roll with what happens. Like that's the whole point of this. I I'm going with what this haircut is because I'm trying to create what this canvas is giving me, what will work best for it. So I saw somebody else a uh, little bit say, asking if I'm worried about it being too chunky. Yeah. No. Because one of the cool things about this scenario, it's shorter hair. So by pinching to get a section to balayage, I'm already creating over direction. So when I take my section and I've got this over direction, and I paint it, it looks like a big, bold chunk sitting right there. But what's going to happen after this has been washed, whatever, when this gets washed out, this section of hair is going to diffuse. It's not going to sit in that exact band like it's sitting right now. 
basically this bleach is acting like product. It's making a spike and holding it still so that it can process. After it's washed clean, this hair will spread out, the highlight will diffuse, and you'll get more of a general area of lightness with certain spotlights where it's the highest concentrated. It does, it's not going to come out in this exact chunk pattern. I'll reference the lasagna in a moment to show you a little bit more of what I'm talking about. So in this haircut, what's a little different with this one and the one that Matt did, like we don't have as much of the fringy around the edges, but there is more hair in here. Obviously, you're not going to want to ignore that because it's going to, it, it's just going to look too dark. It's like, you, we've got a big thing here. There needs to be a little bit of love. This high point seems to be um, a great spot to have, like, it's starburst. You know what I mean? Like, this is, it's, what's the word? Like a calic. So I want to have my highlights sort of coming off of this because that's what's going to send highlights around the whole head. So this hair will be styled and worn a little bit more forward towards the face. So I'm going to over direct it and hold it that way myself. The highlight next to this isn't a very strong one. So this one I'm going to make a little bit stronger to create more dimension. How are we doing? I'm not looking at questions right now. So I've saved some questions. You want some? Ooh, hit me with it. All right. So first one, Dana, Dana, Dana is saying, uh, what is your Instagram address? Oh, um, my Instagram address is hairstyle, H-A-I-R-E, style. My last name is hair. That's how I spell it. And I got my Instagram handle long enough ago. I didn't have to put any weird numbers on it. OG. That's what's up. Um, all right. And then does the size of your color brush determine the size of your section of the hair? Yes. So I also have this eatsy teensy little color brush that I always bring just in case I want to use it. But when it when it first came out, it was like all about, oh my god, it's so great. Look at the precision. It took forever to cover a whole section with this. This really is for tiny little detail work because you're going to be standing there all day, especially if it's on longer hair, like paint, 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 get more, paint, paint, paint. So <laughs> I do have another brush that when I have a long hair guest sit down that is in the same family with these, but it's like twice as wide as this one, Where, especially if you are in a time crunch or if you have longer hair and you know you're going to be doing like painting big swaths, it's just faster. It's, the, it's a similar idea. No, I don't want to use that comparison. No, we're just going to go with it. That's what it is. Uh-oh. What? Oh, okay. I didn't know where you were going. Okay. No, because I was going to compare it to like a round brush. Like you use a bigger one when you want to get through faster, but that's not always why you choose the size of your round brush. True. Got so it. really, I'm just going to stick with this as its own entity. The size of the highlight that you want to or can create should dictate your brush. More so than the size of your section. They're kind of hand in hand. I think I answered your question. I think you caused more questions. No, I didn't. I'm just kidding. I don't know. All right. So what? Wait, I already did Gotta that. Keep one. them going. Uh, would you backcomb your section? Um, <clears throat> no, not on this. I don't feel like there's as much of a need on this shorter hair because. For this haircut, it's you can pretty much just get in there where you need it and put highlights where you want them. You don't even, like, as I'm looking in the camera, I'm like, too dark right on the face right there. Like that, I don't love that. So I am just going to, little trick, load up my paddle. I'm just going to grab a little section out of here. Use the corner of my paddle to hold it because it's shorter hair, so it's easier. So you don't really need to back comb because it's not really going anywhere. Wow, that was a really cool shot. Go back to that overhead. Look at that. So this is the whatever, however the hair was put in here, this acted like a cow lick, and it kicks all the hair in this like circular pattern. So I worked with it. I made it 
so that when the hair is styled, it's going to be styled in that. And I didn't even like try for that. That was just going with the flow of the hair. And now that's how it sits. So that makes me feel good because I know, like I just said, when all of these come apart after the washing and diffuse around the outside layer of this short haircut is going to be lighter and have dimension to it. With some depth underneath, it's really gonna show off all of the texture that Matt put into the haircut. Cool. I'm gonna go back to... Couple questions, so. Yeah, bring it. I just wanna show some of... Yeah. I had a second one. What's that? Uh, would I do the same application in long hair? I mean, however you swipe lightener off is pretty much gonna be universal. But this particular way of approaching this was for this haircut. Like I have other, there's other videos and we'll do more in the future because I really like balayage in case you can't tell. Um, you know, how to approach. I mean, maybe next week I'll try a different type of haircut. If there's anything in specific that you guys are having some struggles with or you want me to touch on one length hair, bobs, whatever you want. Um, I really do think that it's such a, a neat conversation because it forces you to start trusting yourself and thinking about this a little bit differently. I think for so long, hair education has been map this out, this is how you do this, and then you will get this result. And that's really cool, but I tend to think a little bit more like free form than that. So that, I think, is why I gravitate so much to this, because it's never the same. Because the client's situation is never going to be the same. If this person, like, this application will never be she the ser same. She seriously has a bleach mustache. Just her mustache. You're welcome. <laughs> um, this application will never be the same on two people. If somebody, if this haircut sits down and they have a very low density of hair then it's just going to change because as I'm grabbing the hair, it's just going to be different. So you got to be able to roll with it. Ashley, it's not chunky. It looks chunky while it's on the hair, but this is exactly, go to my Instagram. This is what it looks like after versus during. See how it diffuses it's not a chunky look. I can probably, like, mimic some of the, like, when I grabbed it, it was painted on like that. You get that strong, ah. But then, once it comes out, it breaks up and doesn't sit in a hard chunk. So, Trust okay. me. Trust uh, yourself. The clay lightener that you used was? Paul Mitchell Skylights. No paper or foils? Not this time. Um, or was that just an observation? Are you using any toner? I think that kind of... I mean, that's... Maybe. We'll see what it lifts to. If it needs it, then yes. And for the, no. for the lasagna look, we did yellow. Yeah, it was uh, Pulp Riot's Firefly. Because that's what I have in my house. Because I love yellow hair. And it smells good. Uh, how long would you leave that bleach on for? Until it gets as light as you want it to be. Cool. These, are, these are the kind of things. You just got to roll with it. You can't say... Oh, I guarantee this will sit for 15 minutes. I can't guarantee that. Humidity might change it. Wherever you are, the weather might make it lift slower or faster. There is no set time. Watch it. Don't do it and go have a sandwich. Do it. Have two bites of a sandwich and then come back and check it. I set timers to keep myself on track to make sure I'm checking every five or ten minutes until it's done. And then when it's done, then I wash it out. If it needs to be toned, then I use whatever toner I need to get the look that we agreed upon before we started. Uh, Paul Mitchell, wow, can I use it on level five or darker? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's, what is it, seven? Yeah, you can get like seven levels of lift with this. Level five is very dark. You're probably not going to shoot up to a 10 in one day, but you're going to get lots of dimension. You're going to start the process of bringing that hair to wherever you want to land. I actually, what's today? Wednesday? Duh. Um, tomorrow I have a guest. I'm very much looking forward to getting back into her hair because she had dark hair 
she decided to let's try blonde, let's try blonde. So we started loading on more and more blonde over time. She was very blonde and became known for how very blonde she was. And then lockdown hit, and I haven't seen her in over a year. And her hair is super long. It actually looks really good. I'm actually really proud of myself because it looks like a nice ombre. Um, but we get to now begin the process of getting this blonde back to what this blonde was, and it's going to look really cool. Yes, I did bleach her mustache. Yes, he did. All right, what else we got? Because that's um, pretty much it. Like, I don't, I don't know if there's any more questions. I know it looks chunky. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, avoided jail. Yeah, you did. I never impressed. got caught. All right. Um, <laughs> You're impressed. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think that's, I logged on a little later on your application. Are you going to use clay lightener or regular I wanted light? to see the yeah. movement of the hair a little bit. You use clay lightener. You're probably not even at this point in the class. Really, so. so, yeah. And again, to prove it's not chunky, you can see where the chunks are when I pinch that's what it looked like when I applied it. See, it's dark underneath. That's what it looked like when I applied it, and then you let go, and it's more of an area of blonde, a highlight, not a stripe. Brittany, can you repost your question? Um, because I don't see it. Hope you see my question. Is that it? I'm just kidding. I know it's not. <laughs> what you got, Britt? Hit us with it. What did you decide on the highlight combs? Still, jury's out, still love them. I've got a couple of different ones that I'm playing with, uh, but I am liking them. Oh, I think I just sneeze. Uh-oh. Maybe not. I put that mask on. <coughs> oh. You saw it live, folks. Oh, That's here it. You go. That's allergy season in New Hope, Pennsylvania. Oh, I know. I mean, we are in the woods. Like, our salon is literally in the woods. Ready? Oh, hit me. How do you know how far to go up underneath? I'm always afraid of what it will look like underneath. Congratulations on just graduating. Can you show me some pieces to help me better understand? Of course. Uh, so I did a little bit back here, like where he had left longer bits that I knew were going to shoot out. I just did that for fun. But that doesn't exactly blend in a natural way. Oh, thank you, guys. Because in tight. Um, so in the back, I, it's so, can you see dimension? Cause I don't know if this TV is just, yeah, the TV is just dark. Okay. So in here, transitionally, the haircut doesn't necessarily call for highlights down here, which is why I lessened the amount of highlights back here, because that will start to give you that transition. I guess we didn't really talk about that much. Notice I have a much higher concentration of highlights up front along with the mustache. And then as you start to travel back, it lessens and lessens to now that will spread out and give sort of a transition from here into unhighlighted hair. As far as how far should you go, you travel it down until like this hair is a little short. If I start highlighting this, it is going to start coming out chunky. If hair doesn't flow, then it's not going to, like, hold on, what's a better way to put that? Like, if the hair doesn't move, then the highlight's not going to move. If you just sit there and paint something, like, when I pinch this, the reason it diffuses is because the hair moves. But if I pinch this, the hair doesn't go anywhere. So it would just be a chunk, much like these in the back. Like, when I took these cute little fringy pieces. I knew it was going to be chunky. It's kind of why I did it. But it doesn't give you that natural diffuse that you get from up here. So See? Brittany's saying she meant underneath the highlight itself. Oh, no, I left that dark so because that's what creates the dimension. <laughs> so with this one, because it's a short haircut, because I know on longer hair, if you're going for a different look, there are instances where I've painted the underside of a highlight. But here, I did not. Because in the areas where we've got more highlights, I do still need dark to be there. 
so that it doesn't look like you just bleached a chunk of their head and then not the rest. This is a story. We're trying to tell a full story. More blonde, less dark, into more dark, less blonde. And the way that I chose to leave more dark is by not painting the underside except on the very end. And I think, so I think what she's asking is... Damn it, I'm still not getting it. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so you know how, like, you paint on top of the section yeah. on balayage? Yeah. I think she's talking about how much lightener you get up underneath that section. I only worried about the ends. Just the ends go yeah. top and bottom. The ends do top and bottom. That was on the first highlight, if you rewind back. Like, I used... I took my little... Uh, got to be some hair here I can show you um I took my section and when I got to the end I wanted the end to also be highlighted underneath so I split it apart on the paddle to expose all the stuff underneath use the corner of the paddle and nice vertical strokes while holding the brush parallel with the section of hair and it will keep it will avoid any hard lines like that you want to keep it soft even when you're just doing the stuff that's going to be underneath the highlight cool. did i get it that time i think so yeah okay. that's it all right good sweet um cool all right is that it yep do you love it Matt, do you love it? I love it. Yeah, it's that much. It's the mustache. I mean, I yeah. Mm -hmm. It is that that clean work, Bri. I what can I say? <laughs> I'm a perfectionist. Yes, I love. I I can't wait to watch the internet for the next seven years. Talk <laughs> about. It's all over her face. Yes. Yeah, because she's a mannequin, and I don't care. If it's a person. Obviously, we're not going to do that. Yes. Okay. That looks so good. I'm really if I do say so one. myself. Well, I got it. The internet's not going to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just Actually, kidding. they're saying love it. Oh, good. They That's loves it. it. Maybe we should tell them with fantasy colors their, all the time. I'm going to crank their comments up here. Hey, that's uh, the good ones, yeah. yes. <laughs> you should bring this mannequin back next week for a reveal. Oh, tell you what. Follow me on Instagram, and I'll put it on there. There you go. Can you use normal bleach? Um, I wouldn't. There's no real reason they make lightener that is for this purpose. So why not use that? Yeah. Regular lightener, you've got your swelling, your bleeding, like that's this is meant for that. Use the right tools for the right job. You're not using a hammer to take screws out of wood. Use the right tools. Sometimes. All right. Well, yeah. Well, sometimes you can use regular bleach on this stuff. All right, cool. I think we're good. All right. That was a lot of fun. Color. Follow Sweet. me on Instagram. I want to hear from you guys. Matt, like bombard Matt, bombard me. What do you want to see next week? You want to see balayage on long hair? One length haircut? That could be exciting. I know. I'm trying to think. We should do a one length haircut, but put dimension in it with color. That would be cool. I feel like. I think so. I'm yeah. already thinking about it. What do you guys think? The class is already a success. So maybe Tuesday I'll do a one length Cut Kyle. Wednesday, you'll do the color. Whoa. Love it. Teamwork. Makes the dream work. Oh, uh, Brittany's saying long hair next week. All right. <laughs> Brittany decided. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Susan, I know. The Starburst lasagna is being worked on. It is literally in the other room right now on a mannequin stand. Almost finished. Yeah, actually, that's that's a we did not forget true. That. Don't worry. We're curling it up. We're going to make it extra curly, and it's going to be super fun. But thank you for calling me on my lies. Yes. All right. All right. It's been real. Follow us all. Check out Minerva. Get the app. I'll see you next week. <laughs>